Did he watch my video? Harry, have you been watching my videos? No, but this is a beautiful tribute. And I guess that's like a general consensus that any man of this stature would be a rock for a woman. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Leilani of Barbados. Uh, I wanted to go through all of these announcements from the children of Prince Philip these tributes that they've given and I wanted to wait till they all came in and Prince Harry landed and he's in quarantine so he's gone straight into quarantine so that he can be available for the funeral. Meghan has not come with him. Uh, my last video I released it two hours before the announcement came that due to medical advice uh, Meghan would not be able to attend the funeral. So Buckingham Palace put out a statement and they said that his royal highness passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Uh, further announcements will be made in due course. So I was then waiting for these announcements to be made. Um, Prince Charles gave a very heartfelt speech. Um, he gave a tribute to his dear papa and said he was a much loved and appreciated figure. So we're just jumping right in to everybody's announcements. Prince Charles was the one son that did visit him in the hospital and he was very teary-eyed when he came out of the hospital um, because I guess he thought he was saying goodbye to his father, but it turned out that he made it. He made it out of there, um, Prince Philip, and was able to go home to Windsor Castle. So he was very emotional, I think, because he's been through, you know, a sort of um, roller coaster, emotional roller coaster. So we have a message from Princess Anne, um, the Princess Royal, because she's called the Princess Royal, by the way, because she is the only daughter. Um, I have already based it up. I'm recording. <laughs> okay, so she's, yeah, so she's the only daughter of the Queen and Prince Philip, so she's called automatically the Princess Royal. And she wrote a letter, um, it was quite succinct. She said, you know what's going to happen, but you are never really ready. And you know, this man was 99 years old and it just goes to show that you're just never ready to lose your parents. It is just not a natural thing that you can be ever prepared for. Even if they live forever, you'll just never be prepared to lose them. She vowed to take up all the organizations and all the charities that he supported and she would going she was she's going to head those and go forward in his memory and keep those things going for him which is really very important to him or was very important to him and also very important to everyone else because the Duke of Edinburgh awards is a really big thing i mean it was very touching for us in the caribbean and the commonwealth and it was just an amazing amazing thing that he did and I'm glad that she will continue to keep up that and also all the other things that meant a lot to him. So she's spearheading that, that's amazing, his only daughter. So Andrew and Edward spoke outside the church. I liked that Edward was able to, to talk about the people who he touched and also his wife. They were able to talk about all the people he would talk to, he would talk to everybody, whoever was there. They all had their own personal memories and stories. And we were hearts go out to all of them as well. That's because he always exchanged words with everybody because it didn't matter what anybody was doing in and around the estate here and everywhere else. They all meant a lot to him. Um, and he always took a very personal interest in everything that they were doing. You know, if it was a gardener, if it was whoever on the grounds, and he gave them their time all the time, you know, and that's really sweet of him. I like that Andrew made the comparison to COVID, although he, he stressed that Prince Philip did not die of COVID, he acknowledges that and has compassion for a lot of other people in the world during this pandemic that have lost people to COVID. And unfortunately, with the, my father's death, it has brought uh, at home to me, not just our loss, but actually the loss that everybody else has felt for so many people who've, um, uh, as it were, died and lost loved ones during the pandemic. Um, and that's the thing about this family. This family is about compassion. It's about service. And that's why we love them. You know, they're not just some Disney characters, you know, they are really people that hold us together as a community and as um, a nation and beyond. 
So this is what was really amazing about that is that um, he was able to align himself with people who lost loved ones in COVID. I'm going to have to jump to my favorite tribute, which is from William. And I'm going to read the whole thing because I loved every bit of it. He says, my grandfather's century of life was defined by service to his country and commonwealth. Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> um, to his wife and queen and, uh, and to our family. I feel lucky to have not just had his example to guide me, but his enduring presence well into my own adult life. That is such a gift to know your grandfather. This is just me talking now. Um, this is such a gift to know your grandparents. They're not here forever, but it's such a gift to get to know them. Anyway, going back to what he said. Both through good times and the hardest days, I will always be grateful that my wife had so many years to get to know my grandfather and for the kindness he showed her. Megan was also shown kindness. This is, again, me just talking off script. Megan was shown kindness by this family as well you know and for him to highlight how his wife was embraced it just makes you think of megan and how she was also embraced into this family equally anyway going back on i will never take for granted the special memories my children will always have of their great grandpa coming to collect them in his carriage and seeing for themselves his infectious sense of adventure as well as his mischievous sense of humor my grandfather was an extraordinary man and part of an extraordinary generation. Catherine, pause. You see how he calls her Catherine? That is her preferred way of being called, is Catherine. That's her name, and that's what she wants to be called. So um, you notice that um, Megan kept calling her Kate, 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 and Kate. Sorry, but that was a little bit of disrespect there because we all know that she likes to be called Catherine. Back to the script, Catherine and I will continue to do what he would have wanted and will support the queen in the years ahead. I will miss my grandpa, but I know he would want us to get on with the job. You know, that um, those famous memes and t-shirts and everything. Keep calm and carry on. <laughs> this is so British. Um, keep calm and carry on. So they will, they'll carry on with the job. Harry, Let's get to Harry's tribute. Um, Harry, paying tribute to his grandfather, Prince Harry said, he was authentic. Oh, by the way, um, there was another, Prince Harry had a first statement, which nobody liked, which is his original speech, which was, Prince Harry and wife Meghan Markle's foundation, Archwell, paid tribute to Britain's Prince Philip following his death. So there was a first tribute. Um, in loving memory of His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, 1921 to 2021, read the message. Thank you for your service. You will be greatly missed. I don't know if that was rushed. Um, it was very lacking in a lot and not well thought out. And I don't know if it was rushed because of... Um, <laughs> I don't know if they wanted to be the first out there. I, I don't really know how their PR scheme works really, but it was taken down and replaced with this, which was so good. He was, he, uh, Prince Harry said, Prince Harry by himself. He was authentically himself with a serious sharp wit and could hold the attention of any, of any room due to his charm. And also because you never knew what he might say next. He will be remembered as the longest reigning consort to the monarch a decorated serviceman, a prince, and a duke. But to me, like many of you who have lost a loved one or a grandparent over the pain of this last year, he was my grandpa, master of the barbecue, legend of banter, and cheeky right till the end. <laughs> I like that. Prince Harry described Prince Philip as a rock for the queen with unparalleled devotion. While I could go on, I know that right now he would say to all of us, Beer in hand. <laughs> oh, do get on with it, he said. So on that note, Grandpa, thank you for your service, your dedication to Granny, and for always being yourself. Prince Harry signed off his message with the words, per mare per terum. In this is Latin, meaning by sea, by land. 
the motto of the Royal Marines, of which Prince Philip and Prince Harry were both Captain General. Uh, Philip held the role for 64 years before retiring in 2017. Harry succeeded him briefly before stepping down as a working royal last year when he moved to the United States of America, LA specifically. Um, I'm just wondering, he said he, it says it, he described Prince Philip as a rock for the Queen. Her husband, although he was in a backseat position, he really was the head of the household and he was her rock. I'm just trying to figure out here. How much are speech writers paid? Mm. It's about a hundred grand. I don't know if this is per year. But it's about a hundred grand. Um, can somebody please cut me a check? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you watch my video? Harry, have you been watching my videos? No, but this is a beautiful tribute, and I guess that's like a general consensus that any man of this stature would be a rock for a woman. I mean, it's up to poetic justice, but I did say that in my video, oh, <laughs> which came out before this statement. <laughs> I t spoke about Edward and Sophie. They were very sweet and very kind and very soft-spoken, and it was just perfect. You know, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I just feel like all the royals seem to have extra royalty running through their, extra blue blood running through their veins since this debacle that happened with Oprah. I just feel like everyone just seems so much more distinguished, so much more poised, because in comparison to that interview and Meghan being how she presented herself in that interview. So, I just, I, I kind of feel like when I see these people that are together and, you know, united and with this presence, I just feel like, wow, these are, these are the real royals here, you know? Yeah. Um, the Archbishop from Canterbury, who was, who Meghan tried to disgrace, said that Prince Philip was an outstanding example of Christian service and a powerful advocate for conservation and the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, which Prince Philip founded 65 years ago, will be his greatest legacy. And I agree with that because we know about that. We even know about that in, in my humble island in the Commonwealth, the Barbados island that I call. The Barbados. Why do people keep calling it the Barbados? It's called Barbados. There's the Bahamas and then there's Barbados. <laughs> Just side note, side note. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said Prince Philip had touched the lives of millions, including through the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme. So everybody really appreciates his dedication to that and his invention of it, you know. Um, I want to say something from my Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, who put out a message on social media. Um, Mia Motley said, I learned with great sadness of the death of his Royal Highness, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, his support to Her Majesty and the Queen as her consort, as her husband, his service to the UK and his many charities are legendary. Indeed, we remember him fondly in Barbados, particularly with respect to his visits to the, for the promotion of the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, which has had an enormous impact on our young people here and of course on young people all through the Commonwealth. We thank him for his service on behalf of the government and and the people of Barbados, I extend heartfelt condolences to Her Majesty the Queen and to members of the royal family. May his soul rest in peace. I love my country. I love my Prime Minister. <laughs> so, oh, the Cabinet Office spokesperson, this is now back in Britain, is asking for no flowers to be laid at the royal residence to avoid attracting crowds. So this has just had to do with um, COVID um, health regulations. Um, they had a plaque formally announcing the death, which they would normally do for 24 hours, but they just had to leave it up for an hour instead because people love so much Prince Philip and the Queen that it's just difficult to stop people from paying their respects. And it's hard times for that, you know? So the funeral, which we will be attending from our homes, essentially, this is how the funeral is going to run, which is going to be on Saturday at three o'clock our time, I believe, um, here in the UK. Um, the gun salutes will mark the Duke's death on Saturday at Woolwich Barracks, six 13-pounder First World War field guns, the same as those fired for Philip's wedding. 
so that's quite nice and sentimental, um, and pulled by 36 horses, will fire simultaneously as gun salutes at the Tower of London, Hillsborough Castle in Belfast, Edinburgh Castle, and Cardiff Castles, so that's Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, as well as in Gibraltar, and from the Royal Navy um, saluting warships. The gun salutes will be fired inside parade grounds, behind closed doors and televised, with the public asked to watch from home, which we will be doing. So this is going to be very interesting. I am hoping that this will reunite the family and these things do. I mean, they will. It will. There is definitely a closeness with Philip and Harry because they were both working as soldiers in their times. I mean, I was close with my grandmother and I believe Harry is very close with his grandfather. I've been saying that, um, but especially because they had similar careers in the sense that Harry also served two tours in Afghanistan when it was really bad. So it was at his worst really when he served. And I feel a lot of empathy for him. So yeah, I just wanted to keep updated with the, with the family and how everybody's doing. And again, I. I'm praying for them, I feel for them, and I am looking forward to a reconciliation of everything. Um, and thank you for watching, and I will be definitely live watching the funeral when it comes up. So thank you so much. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Bye. This remarkable, devoted service to the Queen, to my family, and uh, to the country, but also to the whole Commonwealth.